It's Wrestling Observer Radio. Garrett Gonzalez and Dave Meltzer here on a Sunday night, and we might as well just get right to the biggest news, which is the uh, passing of Paco Alonso. Yeah, this this came out of nowhere. Um, he passed away yesterday. I just found this out, you know, a little while ago, um, and they announced it. They kept it pretty quiet. Almost nobody knew. I guess there were rumors that were out last night, but I didn't hear them. And um, it was announced at Arena Mexico at the show today. And most of the wrestlers, that was the first that they found out. And it shocked everyone. I mean, um, he's, you know, the head of the longest uh, established pro wrestling company in the history of the industry, which goes back to 1933. His grandfather founded the company, EMLL, uh, Salvador Luteroth. And then um, Salvador Luteroth turned it over to his son, the second Salvador Luteroth in 75. And Paco began working in 75 for the company. And then in 87, uh, Paco pretty much took over. He was, um, Chavo, Salvador, the second Salvador, was more into boxing. And so he kind of started running the boxing end. Paco would run the wrestling end. And Paco, you know, has been running this established successful company for 32 years and you know very few people know much about him because he he kept himself secluded he he ran all made all the business decisions he was surrounded by only a couple of his you know old advisors and stuff and then um you know did almost no interviews i think he in, in the 32 years i think he did two interviews and never really talked about himself and you know nobody knows what happened um if it was sudden it's it feels like it was sudden because there was no rumors or talk about anything Mm -hmm. happening his daughter has started becoming the public face of the company um sophia alonzo but she's probably not going to run the business of the company there was a relative who a couple of years ago if anything happened to paco was the guy who was going to run it but that was years ago so nobody really knows what's going to happen. Um, I mean, they have, it, it's one of the more f- foolproof, not like WWE at this point with the TV money, but it still was a foolproof company in the sense that the, the grandfather um, built arenas all over the place. And these are the arenas that they still run their, their weekly shows in. And so they pay no rent. They get all the concessions. They get all the parking money, um, ticket money. They have Arena Mexico is very big with tourists. So when tourists come, they have buses that take the tourists from the hotels to Arena Mexico, especially on Friday nights. That's like the big thing to do. So it's, um, you know, it's it's a, it's a great live event business. Uh, they probably, um, over the course of the years, um, just in Mexico City alone, I think that there was uh, a, a, the feeling that... Um, that they, you know, probably sell 15,000 tickets a week in, in Mexico City, some number like that, um, and have probably been doing that for the last 32 years. Uh, it's a lot of tickets. Yeah. Uh, I saw the Jericho reaction. Yeah. He put out a video. Looked like it hit him very it, hard. It hit him really hard. Yeah, you could see it in the video, and, and he told me the same thing, that it hit him really hard. Because, you know, Jericho was 22 years old, when he went to CMLL, and he was just a guy who'd done a couple of years of independent wrestling nowhere, and ended up in Mexico, and had worked in, um, you know, he'd worked in, in other places in Mexico, but Paco liked him, and made him a main eventer right away. It was his first time he was ever a main eventer for a big promotion, and he made, you know, that was during the boom period, and before the peso was uh, devalued, so he made, like, really good money. You know, for a 22-year-old, he made great money. He was main eventing against you know, teaming with, you know, Dandy against Silver King and Tejano and Negro Casas and all the big stars of that era, which was, you know, obviously, you know, Wagner it was really great experience for him. Um, so, yeah, but it was, uh, yeah, he was really sad. Talked about um, Paco gave him the name Corazon de Leon, which meant Lionheart. And, um, yeah, um, he was the first promoter to believe in him. Um and it the success he had in Mexico led to his success in Japan with Ghetto in in war with with Tenru actually, and then that led to 
pretty much everything that happened for him. Um, you know, the, um, I'm trying to think, it would have actually been, let's see, now, Cornette brought him in after Mexico, and Paulie brought him in after Cornette, but Paulie didn't bring him in from tapes of what he saw from Smoky Mountain. Paulie brought him in because of um, the Ultimo Dragon. Paulie was looking to book Ultimo Dragon, and he asked me for if I had a tape of Ultimo Dragon that he could watch. So I sent him a tape of Ultimo Dragon and Jericho from Sumo Hall, which was a fantastic match for its time. And for whatever reason, Paulie never did book Ultimo Dragon, but he looked and he just goes, I want both those guys. So he ended up, but he did end up booking Jericho. And Jericho, you know, obviously later through his match at the Super J Cup against Chris Benoit, got, that's how he got his job with WCW. Have you seen any other public Twitter? Only people in Mexico and some of the people in the United States, but um, a lot in Spanish more than English. So I don't really know a lot of what, how it was said, but it's, yeah, it's like Paco and um, Pero within days of each other. It's amazing, you know, um, this Pero was one of his, you know, big draws during certain periods, um, during the nineties period, during the, um, before Pero went with Conan with, um, um, you know, AAA, uh, Conan and Pero had that great run in 91. And then um, later they had, uh, what was it? Um, he came back and um, yeah, and then uh, Joaquin rolled on, you know, passed away a couple of years ago too. So it's a whole changing of the guard um, in, in Mexico. Maybe the next generation won't feud as much, but that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. But Paco, you know, one of the things with Paco is Paco was like, if you, if you turned on him, it's like, that's it. Yep. You know, I mean, that was like his, his thing. It's like Conan, Octagon, Pena, those guys. I mean, he would never have anything to do with them. I mean, Conan tried to make amends how many times and he wouldn't even, you know, talk to him ever. When Pena died, Paco wouldn't acknowledge it because Pena, you know, left and he was his booker and he left and he got to deal with Televisa. He got Televisa to fund his company and went against him. Um, and Conan was the guy recruiting guys from him. And, and that was a war, but he never like whatever. He, and there were people who thought that, that Mystico, who's now Caristico would never be allowed back for that reason. But he, when he left for WWE, when he was like, uh, their big star, but he, for whatever reason, you know, um, he did take Caristico back, but that's unusual. And, and he has brought like L.A. Park uh, back, you know, because he's a big draw. Though that took a, took some doing as well. So it will be very interesting to see, you know, how all the politics work um, with with whoever's in charge of the company and what happens to the company. You know, I mean, yeah, who knows? Uh, Bio and the Observer. Yeah. Yeah, some, you know, there'll be some. But there's not going to be a lot because he's really, aside from what I said, there's really not a lot known of him. Mm -hmm. You know, he really kept quiet, um, you know. But, uh, I mean, yeah, he was the, you know. I mean, except for Vince McMahon. Um, would this be correct? Yes, it would, ha it would have to be. Except for Vince McMahon, he's the most enduring promoter. And he actually, well, I guess him and Vince probably... Vince actually dates back just a little before him because Vince got started working for his father around 70, 71, and Paco started in 75. And Vince owned his own company five years before Paco got the company. So Vince would have been longer, but he's the only one. 